So I'm Tony Butler and I'm talking about some of the radio plays which were performed on BBC Radio uh, a few years ago now. And Will is going to ask me some questions about them. The first one was called Mary and the Birthday, and not a very satisfactory title, I don't think. Well, what's it about? Well, it's about abortion, actually. Mm. And one of the responses from it was that uh, somebody in the Roman Catholic Church wrote to the BBC saying they were jolly glad that this sort of play had been put out because it gave people <laughs> second thoughts about abortion. But that wasn't the intention of it at all. Um, in fact, the, uh, it, it was a most extraordinary event which, 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 which lay behind the, the origin of this play because I was at some meeting where there were some psychotherapists present and we were talking about uh, how, pe how things affect people's lives and the things they come up with. And one of the therapists uh, told this story of a girl who was now in her 20s, who when she was like 17 and 19, had two abortions. Mm. And what came up in the therapy from this girl who was very disturbed was uh, that these two might have been babies formed a, a, a very strong place in her life. Mm. And on the birthday, which would have been the birthday of the ba when the baby was born, she would celebrate in some sort of way. She would ask people in for a party or she would light a candle. And every year she did this for the unborn little babies. So you decided to write a play about that? Well, I thought this is, I thought this was absolutely yeah. extraordinary that somebody could have been, uh, to, could, could have caught on to this. And, and talking to people since then, uh, apparently it's not, it's not that rare. People do actually know. So that this is the story in this play um, about uh, a couple who uh, and, and the wife becomes very disturbed <laughs> and eventually confesses that, that this, you know, this was the day when her baby might have been born. Mm -hmm. and, and what else happens in the play? I mean, that's, is that kind of the <laughs> gist of the play? Well, I haven't actually read That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Never mind. What do you remember about, um, what do you remember about uh, the production, if anything? This was one of the occasions in the BBC studio where we were talking about various things where I've recorded somewhere else that um, actually somebody somebody mentioned the Scottish play by by William Shakespeare and actually uh, described the, uh, the said the title of it mm -hmm. and we had to all close down and move out <laughs> of the studio and get back in again. Um, but. Um, it was one of the it was one of the easier plays to record actually because it's just a it's just a sort of straight dialogue play in which mm -hmm. people uh, try and try and work this thing out. Actually, the other thing I do remember is, yes, I did produce in the original script for this a sort of subplot, uh, a, a, an event in which they were travelling in the country and they came to a church where there was a there was a tombstone of a dead baby, and it, it seemed to me that that this might make the play richer by, by having that in. But the director of it persuaded me to take that subplot out, mm -hmm. out of the play. Uh, yes, I remember that bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say it became rather more just the play, of very, very simple between the two characters. Do, yeah. do you remember what year it was produced? Mid-80s, I Mid guess. Was it, was it on Radio 4? Was it Radio, Radio 4? Radio 4, yes. Yeah, yeah. an afternoon, a weekday afternoon, yeah. All right. yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about your other play here. I'm going to hand this one to you. So what one, uh, what one do we have here? What do you remember? This was a few years later. We've got it here. Rehearse, record, 3rd of October, 1990. Yeah. And what's the name of this play? This is called Remember Happiness. And it's a play about a, a, a boy who gets killed on a motorbike. Mm. And in <laughs> fact, um, it starts off with the family going be going away on a holiday, and he hasn't turned up. And eventually, you know, quite soon, they, a policeman comes to the door, and they discover that this boy has been killed playing on a motorbike. And the the um, the issue in the play 
is that um, in fact have his mother knew that he had this motorbike and she sort of connived with him and his friend who were, who were riding it on the wasteland near their home uh, and she'd never told her husband that his son had a, had a motorbike and so this produces obviously a tremendous conflict between them and the play is about really coming to terms with this and the you know the, the, the way the parents might be set against each other by their teenagers and uh, the particular tragic outcome of this and as it were the the blame which it, which the mother feels for this and the, and the final resolution where you know they managed the, the, the couple managed to sort out the um, uh, the the guilt and the, and the and the tragedy of this. Why did you write this play? Well, I had a son who was killed in an accident. Mm. Not under these sort of circumstances. It was completely different. But mm. uh, my experience was that over the years, learning to live with this um, knowledge of, of, of the day. It, it was different because, uh, in my case, nobody was to blame, there was, it was a complete accident, so, I, so it was just the experience of grief which um, uh, I was ex uh, ha had experience, which I thought, you know, it's worthwhile trying to, and it's always a struggle. This sort of thing, to, to try and, and to put into some objective out there script mm. something which uh, you know you have experienced yourself. Mm. And uh, what do you remember about the production of this play? Remember anything about it? Well, what I remember was that this was at the time when I was trying, as it turned out, never with any success, to get a play on television. <laughs> oh. And during the recording of this play, a television producer with whom whom I had briefly met and whom I had tried to communicate with, with about, about putting a, a play through her, uh, she was she crept into the studio during the recording of this and was sort of sitting at the back listening to this and and watching me and uh, this was very very weird mm. <laughs> but obviously somebody had said to her yeah he writes plays with a pretty high emotional content mm -hmm. and uh, it was a bit it was the most emotional bit in the play where the mother describes to her friend how every afternoon she sort of breaks down and mm. thinks about her son. yeah so yeah and the people who were in the play are any of them uh to focus on a bit more mundane things, were they even famous here? They suddenly become I famous. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know I any don't those remember names any here? of these people. Yeah. See, uh, I don't know them uh, either. Jenny Howe, Ken Bones, Elizabeth Kelly, Richard mm. Pierce, David Bannerman, Vincent Brimble, Tara Dominic, Danny Schiller, Oriel Smith. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid I don't. I, I, don't, I don't either. They may be famous, but I, I don't know. Well, um, so, so I mean, to kind of finish up this video, how would you kind of describe your experience of writing radio plays for the, the BBC? Well, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's, it's very satisfactory because once you're in the, once, you know, once it happens, uh, but of course getting in there, and even if you had three or four plays broadcast, which I have, uh, to, to, to stay there on their list and to, and to get anybody to pay any attention to a new play is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I belong to the Society of Authors and I've tried to get plays through various mm -hmm. independent producers, but it is extremely difficult and uh, because, of course, the, the BBC has an enormous output of plays mm -hmm. and at the same time they're receiving dozens of unsolicited plays every week mm -hmm. from people who think they've written the best radio play ever. Um, <laughs> so there's, uh, there, there was, I did at this time, uh, 1990 this is, I belong to a group who used to meet near King's Cross uh, called the Playwrights Cooperative, which was a very nice setup for a time. I think it, I, I left soon after this, but um, at one meeting, amazingly somebody had actually heard my play on the radio and uh, 
he What's said. He said something like, um, yeah, well, I turned on it by chance. I heard this play and I thought this is a very well-written play. And then I listened to the end of it. And of course, it, he said it was your play, Tony. Right? So <laughs> that, was, that was nice. Didn't you also say somebody wrote uh, a letter in about this one? Or was it the other Yes, one? yes. I think two or three of my radio plays, I did get a, 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 as much response as somebody actually writing in to the BBC to yeah. say, oh, I heard this play and I thought it was very, very good, yes. Yes, and somebody wrote in about this play, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what they said? Uh, I've, I've got the letter somewhere. I mean, it, it says something like, uh, we listened to this play and my wife and I have had this experience of losing our one of our children and we were deeply moved by the way it came across in this play, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you very much.